Good afternoon. Hardest time of the day, right after the lunch, day two, everybody's tired. So I'm going to try to give you some energy to lift up a little bit the, 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 the energy in the room by telling you a story. My story started five years ago, and uh, basically I was a mental coach, and I was living my best life. I was working from Singapore to Argentina, and every four days I was in an interna uh, international flight. So basically I have contributed to climate change more than anyone because I was in a plane more than I was in a subway. And um, enjoying my life, great hotel, great clients, great life. But the thing is, I have a problem. I'm addicted to nature. I love to see nature, and I love to discover new places. Wherever I would go in the world, I would see that nature was in danger. And more importantly, the inequality in between uh, the Western life and the people's life was such a huge gap that I felt that it's wrong. What I was doing is helping companies make more money while destroying the planet. I was part of the problem. So to me, it was more about asking myself, how can I be part of the solution? What can I do? How can I use my talent and my resource to actually be part of the solution and inspire other people to follow the same path? So I heard about permaculture. It was something in the air. I heard about it, and I wanted to know more about it. Permaculture, have you ever heard about it? Oh, yeah, I'm a mental coach, so I ask question. Permaculture, the culture of permanence. How to create an autonomous, self-sustained ecosystem that produces abundance. I like the idea, so I read about it, and I decided I need to train myself. I went to Costa Rica, and uh, basically, my idea always has been to work in Congo. Why in Congo? Because to me, it was an obvious choice. We speak about the Amazon forest, and the whole world is crying because it's disappearing. The bad news, the Amazon forest has reached a tipping point. It emits more carbon dioxide than they actually store. It's a catastrophe. Southeast Asia, it's too late. We have transformed most of the forest in order to create a pine hole. What are the last forests on the planet? The first and last carbon sink on the planet is the Congo Basin, but nobody is talking about it. Nobody is doing much. And most people would tell you to do a project in Congo is totally crazy because it's the hardest, uh, the, the hardest country to be in. So I decided I have to go to Congo. And I wanted to present a new way of living, but before I would do this, I had to make sure that I would live like this. Otherwise, I will not be credible. If I go in Congo and tell them, you have to live like this, but I live in a big hotel, big cars, whatever, I'm not credible. So I went in the jungle in Costa Rica for six weeks to actually learn uh, food autonomy and energetic autonomy, which is really important. I will come back to that later. And to be honest, that was the greatest six, six weeks of my life. I didn't want to go out because a tropical farm in permaculture is like an Eden, a real garden of Eden. It's, it's amazing. So I learned. Then I decided I have to learn from the Congolese reality. In mental coaching, when you want to create change, you always have to start from people's reality. That means you have to know the culture, the language, the food, the way of living, what they do, how they do it, and why they do it. So I spent a lot of time traveling everywhere in Congo with one challenge. I wanted to plant a thousand trees. That was my personal challenge. And it just happened to be in COVID time. So it was quite an adventure. It was totally crazy. And I succeeded. As you can see on the map, pretty much, I went anywhere I could go to organize conference, sharings. And it was more about learning from them than me teaching them. So I learned a whole lot of things. And it got me to some conclusion. The main question is, how can we go for, from a vicious circle to a virtuous circle? Basically, how we can make sustainable change that doesn't rely on me. How we can change the mentality. What I have learned is that most people in Congo eat one time a day. In one of the greatest countries for agriculture in the world, they eat one time a day. Why they burn the forest? For two reasons. Production of energy and agriculture. Slash burn, plant corn and cassava. The next year, no fertility, we do it again, which has led to a terrible numbers. 500,000 hectares of forest disappear each year in the, uh, in the basin of Congo. How can we do this? How can we change this? 
basically we have to address the reason why there is a problem. Agriculture and energy. So we have to propose a system that allows people to be self-autonomous in a different way, in a regenerative way. How can we do this? I started from the reality that I've known in Costa Rica. I live in a farm, I don't want to go away, I'm super jealous, I want, to, I want to create this. So my idea is that, would that be applicable in Congo? If I create a permaculture farm, would be people uh, be motivated to start living like this? And the answer is yes. When you see these things, they, they just want to duplicate it. You create motivation. So basically the strategy was really easy. You create a permaculture uh, farm as a pedagogical site, a showroom of all the techniques we can do. You invite people, they see it and say, I want to do it. You have created the will. The good news is after that, what we tell them is like, you want to do the same? Come with me. It's easy, it's a school. We teach them the permaculture uh, solutions and when they get out of uh, the school, they want to plant trees because how can you create an autonomous system, permanent fertility with the trees? So all of a the sudden, they got out of the school and they start to planting trees by themselves. We don't have to pay them, we don't have to manage them, they just do it by themselves, for themselves. And that's how I got to Graine de Vie, because Graine de Vie is basically doing two things. We create nurseries in the, the, the village, nurseries mostly of cash trees, basically food forest. We create food forests with the villager, it's their trees, they manage it. And it changed the perception. Because over the sudden, the more trees I plant, the more well-being I have the community. You create a link of interdependency in between the trees and the well-being in the community. So we have created adhesion. Through the school, we create knowledge. So basically, I want and I know. The next step is what? I do. I act. Only action will change the world. So what we do with them is we create reforestation program using a very specific technique, direct seeding. Basically, we plant tree like we plant corns, which the village, I mean, they just enjoy it because they know how to plant corn. So we teach them how to treat the seeds. They go in the field, and one person can plant one hectare in one day. That means that we can do great surfaces in a small time for a very cheap price. Basically, we do 10,000 hectares uh, with the village, and we can do this in two months. And we have a success rate. Uh, I just received a number, actually, because of my, my friends there are planting right now, and they send me feedback every day. And we have reached a success rate of 80%. So for 1 million, we can plant 10,000 hectares. So altogether, my key learning point is we need to provide inspiration, training, and support. And that's what we do. And so far, what we have done is that more than 700,000 trees in, seven pro uh, in five provinces by the end of the year uh, uh, will be planted for free. I didn't pay anybody. They just took uh, I mean, this project to the heart and they're just doing it by themselves and for themselves. Another thing that I'm very proud of is that we have created a movement, a citizen movement of regeneration that is called Fanyatu. Fanyatu in Swahili means just do it. Stop talking, start acting. And uh, what we have done and gather is uh, in between 300,000 and 500,000 uh, families have joined the movement and are expecting me to come back and create the school with them and the reforestation project. And uh, yeah, the question is how we create the snowball effect. And that's pretty much the summary. Basically, we create a school, permaculture school, where we teach food autonomy and energy autonomy, and we create adhesion. People want to do it. They go and they want to create the auto-fertile system. What we do with Grande Vie is we provide the nurseries so they have revenue, and then we create the huge 10,000 hectare project. We accept the carbon credit. All the money goes back to the community. I'm not trying to get rich. If I wanted to make money, I would do something else. And the idea is that the money of the carbon credit has to go to the people that actually work the field to create this link of interdependency. And what we do there, with that money, we give them a menu. A menu with all the regenerative solution, nature-based solution, low-tech solution, anything that they can do by themselves in the country, 100% locally. 
How do we do this? We recruit students, we give them the solution, we challenge them, produce a biodigester, produce a solar oven, produce whatever solution we have. After that, the community can choose in the menu, okay, we want to install energy, sanitation, whatever they want, and we won't do it for them. What we do is that we create, basically, the ecosystem in which they're going to learn to do by themselves, so that the next step is they can go in the next village and teach it. They basically create their own job. So to me, this conversation, uh, conservation and regeneration project, before anything, it's an educational project. It's an economy of knowledge. Sharing the knowledge allow people to take uh, responsibility for what they do, and the, mo the most important thing, create autonomy. My KPI is that I have to be gone from the country in three years. If I don't succeed to be out of the country in three years, it means I have failed, because that means they still depend on me, which is the opposite of what I'm trying to create. So, the main challenge right now is basically to gather the people in the community in Europe, all around the world. We have 500,000 families that are willing to join and invest in their own development. Basically, they're paying to receive the training, which is the opposite that has been done in Africa. If you want to teach people in Africa, you have to pay them. I don't do that. It makes no sense to me. Otherwise, I have no value. They are ready to pay to access the training, to invest and to build. What we need to do is to create the same movement in Europe so that all citizens become responsible to actually do something about it. I know I've passed my time, but to me, and I will finish on this, regeneration is responsibility of everybody, not the corporate. Every citizen of the world has to do something about it. My objective, my hope, is that my story, what we have been doing in Congo, will inspire other people to follow the same thing and to put their resource, their ideas, their creativity, their network to actually act. Thank you very much.